Batman is a fascist. <laughs> DC. DC. What are you doing? I, honestly, I, I'm asking. Like, what is the plan here exactly? So, right. Let me set the stage here for a second. The uh, latest trailer for Blue Beetle, yet another superhero movie from DC that I couldn't care less about, frankly. <laughs> it's just... Oh, it's another CGI suit movie. Hmm, brilliant. <laughs> God damn it. See, I, I want DC to do well. At least I want them to be alive, because currently Marvel has a complete and utter monopoly on the superhero market, and, well, I like superhero stuff, and I'd like for somebody else to do something in that sphere as well, rather than just, you know, Marvel and Disney. But after James Gunn decided to pass on Henry Cavill, who would probably have single-handedly revitalized the entirety of DCdom by himself, for the simple reason that he wanted to give people, you know, Superman movies instead of yet more cringy adolescent insecure teenagers whining about their powers. Anywho, in the latest uh, Blue Beetle trailer, they decided to drop a joke about Batman being a fascist. A joke. Well, as they. Uh, George Lopez Batman joke in the Blue Beetle trailer is causing quite a reaction from DC fans. I would imagine, because is they. If you were in a better position, DC, I could kind of look at this and think like, okay, well, it's sort of like shock marketing, right? You're going to drop a line in there, you know, make a little bit of a throwaway, you know, dedicate like a second to it, which is what they did, and you're going to hope this kicks up enough of a fuss to get people interested in actually going to watch your movie to see if you ever actually elaborate on this nonsense, or even better, if Batman will show up in some way to kick his uncle's ass, I guess. But you're not in that position, DC. People already hate you. People are looking for any reason they can to hate you. And you are giving them the reasons. Why? <laughs> All right. Let's 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 talk about this for a little bit, Sally. Because here's the thing. The, uh, the Blue Beetle thing uh, is, isn't just a throwaway joke. Because that was one of the initial responses by a lot of people, and myself included. Like, okay, who cares? Like, ah, oh, he's a fascist. Ah, you see. Mirror, modern day bush bu bullshit. Ugh. But then the director and the uh, the producer actually went out of their way to defend it. This article here talks a lot about it, how they actually talk about it a lot. Uh, experiencing superheroes and opinions through the eyes of the family, how they are just having honest opinions about the other superheroes, because after all, Batman is totally a fascist or something. And I guess that's one of the other reasons they're hoping, like, hmm, how does he elaborate upon this? Spoiler alert, he's not going to. This is a line to get you interested in the movie itself. If they are going to elaborate on this at all, it's going to be Blue Beetle at some point going like, oh, you, you know, I, I'm totally a little bit crazy too, so, you know, uh, relax on Batman, I guess. Or they can also be heading in the opposite direction of actually trying to finally cancel Batman. Because here's the thing. Uh, Batman's been in the crosshairs for quite a while now. There was the infamous incident over a G4. Thank God it is now long dead again. Where they asked people to argue for cancelling Batman because he is rich and he is white. Which might sound like stupid reasons, but I remind you, these people are rabid racists, and this is more than enough. And hey, this isn't even the only time, it's merely the latest iteration, really. As the whole cancel Batman thing, it's been going for a while now. Uh, this is from last year, you can find examples of this back to like 2016, when the wokeist nonsense were first starting to get its feet underneath it. Because, well, he is rich, and he is white two things that the modern-day far-left are not particularly fond of at all, and they would much prefer it if Batman could be shoved out of the way and be replaced preferably with several females of a lesbian persuasion. They've already tried that, in fact, with the whole Batgirl uh, thingy-bob, Batwoman, was it? The awful DC show, which, thank God, I managed to avoid as much as possible. They would have preferred if that was a bigger hit than Batman, but the problem is, people like Batman. <laughs> misinformed though they might apparently be. And the uh, guys behind the whole Blue Beetle thing, again, I don't think this was a joke, because, right, it had the reaction as intended, a lot of people going like, this is retarded, this is idiotic, why are you making this, don't you want people to watch their movies? To which the, I believe, the director responded, oh, my job is done here, because it's apparently pissing off the right people. Mm-hmm. 
If pissing off the right people you mean pissing off your potential viewers and fans, then yes, you are entirely correct. And Angel has some other spicy takes as well, including the only thing I hope Trump has similar to Lincoln's presidency is the way it ended. <laughs> This was deleted immediately, incidentally. <laughs> it's like, okay, if you're gonna be spicy, uh, stick with it. But no, of course, he realized quite quickly that, hmm, I did just wish death upon an American president. Uh, one that is still widely beloved by half of the American populace. That might be considered a bit of an extremist statement, even in today's environment. And so, he always uses deletes rather quickly, but well, screenshot technology has been around for a while. And this isn't even his spiciest nor his dumbest take. I introduce you to... Puerto Rico is a slave colony of the United States of America. <laughs> your passport was imposed upon us, so there is no one else to go after your country shits on my land and blames us for the stink. <laughs> Can't say that word on YouTube anymore. <laughs> Puerto Rico is a slave colony of the United States of America. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, America is well known for its uh, modern day slavery acts, of course, imposing their will upon smaller nations and forcing them to pick their cotton for them. He's being ridiculously hyperbolic, of course, but again, that is the problem with the modern day leftist lingo, and this guy is most assuredly one of those people, which is why you know the movie's probably going to be ass as well, and why the primary marketing material for the movie has nothing to do with the movie, but that it has a Latino superhero. And, you know, best part is, best part is, okay, so, you're gonna, you're gonna pitch Blue Beetle, right? Yeah, Blue Beetle, he's, he's like a character and stuff, he's unique, and he's, he's got like an alien super suit. Okay, how do you pitch this? Uh, Blue Beetle trailer, DC's first Latino superhero, uh, gets Iron Man-like alien suit. Literally, your PR pitch is his skin color, or, well, heritage, I suppose, here, and the fact that he looks like Iron Man. Alrighty then. And people are wondering why DC is failing. Good god. And the worst part is, yes, no, it is basically just Iron Man suit in the way they presented it. Which is also the problem, because I'm pretty sure Blue Beetle actually predates Iron Man. So surely they would have wanted to lean into the whole alien symbiose thing. And they probably would want to keep Iron Man comparison out of it entirely, refusing it. Or if it's brought up, they would simply sidestep and say, no, this is completely different. It's a um, biological suit. It's a Parasite, etc. If anything, compare us to like, um, to like Spawn, for example, or Parasite, the Japanese anime, instead of Iron Man, because you, you kind of want to avoid that comparison. Although, to be fair, as the on the one hand, the first Iron Man movie was the only really good Iron Man movie because it actually had Iron Man in it. The two and the third movie had less and less Iron Man, therefore defeating the entire purpose of making an Iron Man movie. Which you'd think would be obvious. But if they wanted to simply just make another Iron Man 1, okay, I'm mildly intrigued at least, but I can't be the only one who is just sick of origin stories at this point. This is one of the primary reasons why I would have wanted a Cavill back as Superman as well. Forget about the origin story. We all know how half of these superheroes appeared. They were bitten by radioactive spiders, or boned by alien symbiosis, as in this particular case, or gotten them by cosmic na la 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 la. I don't care anymore. I genuinely don't. I do not want to see another awkward, angsty teenage little bitch whine about not being able to master his powers. I want him to kick the shit out of people. I want him to kick the shit out of criminal organizations. See, one of, one of the beautiful things, I, um, I rewatched some of the old Supermans uh, recently. The very first one, Superman 1, right? They introduce Superman, they do a little bit of a back backstory, etc. But when you first see him, he's doing stuff. He's, you know, it's not even big stuff. Like, he's arresting criminals. He is taking care of robbers or saving cats from trees. He's doing Superman things rather than focusing on how he became Superman, because we all know. Frankly, I would have much preferred it if. Blue Beetle was simply introduced as an already capable figure, and then we simply get to see him being a capable figure. 
because people are interested in watching the cool heroes do cool things, frankly. Now you can introduce errors and flaws to them as well as a part of the ingredient, but they need to be ingredients, not the main goddamn stock of the story again. There is a reason why. Uh, James Bond, for example, in um, <clears throat> the, 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 the writer, Ian Fleming, he got his ass whooped in a casino, casino uh, you know, the actual casino game, uh, by Germans during the Second World War. I, I can't remember the entire story, but basically it was a humiliating defeat at the crap table. And so he writes his alter ego self-insert character, James Bond, in the same situation, but this time, of course, he wins. Why? Because it's more fun to have a competent hero beating the bad guys. And again, Cavill would have been perfect for that. I belabor this point, I really do, but Jesus Christ, you had the goal right there. You had the layup. You did. All you need to do was like, okay, sure, do Superman and actually do Superman this time. Not grim, dark Superman, not angsty, broody Superman, not negative Superman, not turning evil Superman, just goddamn Superman. But no. We're getting Blue Beetle instead. Blue Beetle, whose marketing scheme is uh, he's Latino and he's Iron Man. Ugh. Oh, and Batman's a fascist. <laughs> I haven't even addressed that argument because, frankly, <laughs> do I need to? <laughs> no. Oh, God. Again, fascism. Well, actually, you know what? No, Batman actually perfectly fits the definition of fascism as it is actually applicable today, meaning bully. Simple as, like, Orwell was spot on here right now. The only actual definition of the word fascism in the modern world is bully. Is somebody imposing their will upon somebody else with physical violence. That is the, the only definition. And Batman does do that. He bullies criminals, mind you. <laughs> But hey, from the modern day worker's perspective, I'm sure they're merely the oppressed underclass. I'm sure Penguin has a deep socialist background somewhere for them to look at. Probably, frankly. But no, of course, he's not a fascist. He's a goddamn superhero. And <laughs> again, it's not, it's not even a point to address it. Again, the only reason why it was put in the trailer was to cause a bit of PR nonsense around it. And hey, you have succeeded in this, but... God, I've, I've talked about this so many times previously, it's barely worth rehashing, but apparently it does need to be mentioned. Bad PR absolutely does exist in the modern world. The reason why people said back in the day that there is no such thing as negative PR is because it was next to impossible to get anyone to actually hear about you. When your primary ways to reach people was the newspaper, or word of mouth, or radio, etc., or television later on, which were all extraordinarily expensive, anything that got your name out there was good. Now, you have access to a million different ways to reach out and contact people, especially when you're working for an enormous company like DC, managing a superhero entity, that you are not wanting attention. You want positive attention, specifically, and negative attention will hurt and damage you, even if you get a short-term benefit out of this. Like, for example, the Star Wars nonsense, the, uh, the Star Wars trilogy, the Disney trilogy, it did earn its money back, but ever since, the, the entire setting has been damaged. Its toy sales are going down, its profitability, its eyeballs, views are all going down because people are sick of it. And in DC's case, you... <laughs> You do not want to be betting on a short-term gain at the length at the cost of long-term gains, because frankly, you already don't have a long-term outlook. Mm. Goddamn see. More and more, I'm thinking that people are spot on when they say that James Gunn, etc., are actually Disney infiltrators, and all they're doing is trying to ruin the entirety of the studio, <laughs> along with the comics, until eventually, I guess, they can be bought up by Disney as well. Mm. <laughs> that seems a plausible explanation, does it not? Yeah. But yes, there you have it. Batman's a fascist. Why? Because please watch our shit. No, being the resounding reply from again a near unified consumer base. Better luck next time, I guess. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.